shot. High speed pursuits. He's running on foot. Fort Bend, Texas. Robbery suspect Joseph Flores ditched his car after a high speed chase. But the law caught up with him. Okay, I got him. Flores was arrested and spent 11 months behind bars. Now, a year later, just one month after his release, he's on the run again. This time, Flores and his girlfriend shot two people during a robbery, including a cop. The sergeant came on and said, um, shots fired and he had been hit. Deputy Mike Waller joins in the furious pursuit. But the fleeing pickup soon leaves officers in the Texas dust. This guy was hell-bent on getting away. Officers split up in search of their prey. Suddenly, Waller spots the renegades pushing it to 70 down a side street. A potential death sentence for neighborhood children. I passed a kid on his bicycle on a sidewalk, and that was a reality check. It's kind of like, hey, remember where we are. Without warning, the chase takes a deadly turn. The girlfriend fires on Waller. She actually reached out the passenger window and aimed and fired three or four rounds. They were obviously, you know, would-be cop killers. Waller acts fast. With one hand on the wheel, he grabs an assault rifle from under his dash and fires. I think fired 12 rounds through the cab of the truck. And then they really took off. Flores has only one chance to escape, the open highway. We were headed towards the freeway. Sam just told me that that's where he was going to try to go. Waller is determined not to let it get that far. If I took out a tire, he was not going to be able to maintain control of the vehicle. Waller unloads another round of lethal force. Eight bullets tear into the truck's tires, but still, the suspects thunder onto the highway. I knew this guy wasn't going to last long. We continued southbound. I saw the tire starting to come apart. We started to come up into some traffic, and he started fishtailing. He lost it and came around one vehicle totally, um, from, from the rear all the way around the front. And there was a black pickup truck that was traveling southbound also, that when he fishtailed around, he, came, he hit that truck, spun that black truck out, and he continued on to hit the wall. Incredibly, Flores bails out, taking a blind leap over the wall, 20 feet straight down. But Waller's first concern is the trigger-happy girlfriend. I told her, don't even think about it, because that'd be the last thing she did. Only now can police turn their attention back to Flores. We had a visual on him, I mean, from the minute he exited the vehicle. History repeats itself, and Flores is once again apprehended. Two would-be cop killers turned Texas streets into a war zone. But thanks to one determined deputy, their reign of terror has hit a dead end. <laughs> Douglas County, Georgia. A stolen pickup is surrounded by a screaming swarm of cruisers. Inside is Michael Richardson, a career shoplifter and car thief. Deputy Jamie Fowler helps corral the road rebel. Four or five deputies attempted to box him in, and it didn't work. 
Richardson bolts completely off the pavement and rumbles along the tree line at 90 miles an hour. Cops can't believe their eyes. He had moved all the way off the road and went on the opposite side of the guardrail. The driver narrowly dodges a bridge support, flying up the embankment and blowing out two tires. Running on rims, the highway hooligan pulls over as if to surrender. But the suspect is about to make another mind boggling escape. Suddenly, he careens toward the median. He cuts straight across the path of opposing traffic and onto the other side of the freeway. Fowler and his fellow deputies stay right with him. The renegade grinds back onto concrete. Then he accelerates straight toward an officer. One of our other deputies had tried to uh, step out of his vehicle and was going to try to take a shot at him. And he tried to hit that deputy. Fowler is now chasing a madman, raging head on into oncoming cars. The plan? A pit maneuver. Bump the suspect's fender and spin him off the road. There's just one problem. This is my first pit that I've ever done. I've never attempted one before. If Fowler does the pit wrong, the pickup will fly into three lanes of freeway traffic, ending in certain disaster. I may not have had that opportunity again to do it. It was now or never. Fowler's first pit is a direct hit. The truck skids and launches into a barrel roll. I seen the bottom of the vehicle come past my window. I tried to do it by the book, and luckily it worked out. The petty thief with a pension for speed is taken into custody. I was just glad it was over with. Luckily, nobody got hurt. This reckless trailblazer was willing to take a shot at anyone. But when it counted, it was Deputy Fowler who hit the bullseye. Medina, Ohio. A drunk driving suspect leads police on a nighttime chase heading the wrong way down a one-way street. The driver races toward opposing headlights, peeling off at the last second. South Brown Broadway on a square. The chase cuts through an alley. Where we at? We're behind Flaggett. I think he's looking for a place to bail it. As the drunk driver roars onto a surface street, Sergeant George Horton swoops in from the left. The suspect feels the heat and cranks up the speed. I had him upwards of 65 mile an hour. I closed the gap between my car and his car. And we're coming to a uh, S turn. At the speed we we're going, I didn't think he was going to be able to make it, and uh, he didn't. The driver bails out of the wreck and takes off running. But there's something this fugitive didn't count on. Me being a canine unit, I released the police dog, tried to apprehend him. Horton lets loose 85 pounds of snarling German Shepherd. Pounded by the canine, the suspect runs right into the street. He didn't 
see the sheriff's car coming. He turns around and runs right into the hood of the car. The attention of the suspect was on the dog so much that when he ran right into the side of the sheriff's car and knocked himself to the ground. Actually stunned himself enough where a sheriff's deputy and one of our other officers grabbed him. Once under arrest, the man gives his intoxicated rationale for this outrageous ride. Oh, you're on it. Are we? Oh, you're on it. Come here. Can we have some fun? Yeah, it was kind of amusing to see him bounce off the cruiser he never saw coming. He deserved it. In the end, this drunken runner was charged with DUI and resisting arrest. His punishment for jaywalking, however, had already been given. Coming up. Terror in the fast lane when an outlaw loses control. Plus, speed freaks on the run crash hard and rocket into a horrifying death roll. Later, Ooh, that was tight. female bandits wreak havoc on the streets and get stomped by the highway patrol. When most shocking, high speed pursuits continues. Atlanta, Georgia. Man, he's really flying. Chopper cameraman Rick Nelson tracks down a runaway suspect on the interstate. Going south. We just got a call saying there was a police chase on 400. He was moving, doing about 100, 110. Nelson has no idea that he's about to witness one of the most tragic and violent pursuits ever caught on tape. The man's crime? Passing a bad check. Forgery. That just seems incomprehensible that forgery, you'd be running that fast and risking your life and everybody else's life. Ground units try to keep up with the suspect. But they can't match his reckless pace. The man clips a construction barrel, nearly losing control. But instead of slowing, he guns it. You just can't control a vehicle at that, at that rate of speed. And you're gonna hit something. The driver takes a ramp toward a busy freeway interchange. It's the last mistake he'll ever make. We're just shot. It was really an horrific wreck. Clipped the rear end of another small vehicle. It just threw him across the freeway to the wall. He was ejected as he hit the wall. He went out the window over to about the second lane of 285. It just was unbelievable. By the time cruisers arrive, there's only a cloud of dust. Officers rush to the man's aid. But there's nothing they can do for him. It's one of the grimmest scenes they've ever had to secure. Their only solace is that it could have been much, much worse. He was the only injury in, in the whole event. The thought that nobody else was injured was amazing, absolutely stunning. It's a frightening accident that Rick Nelson will never forget. To risk that kind of life in your life, it's just not worth it. Chickasaw County, Mississippi. Two teenagers wanted in a methamphetamine case speed south at 100 miles an hour. They was running as fast as their car would go, from lane to lane, around cars. If their car would run 500 miles an hour, they'd run 500 miles an hour in that car. Suddenly, the meth-mad teens go head-on with a pickup. A close brush with death. Too close. The deputy has seen enough. I called them dispatch and advised them that I was going to have to stop the pursuit. If they're not, they're going to kill somebody. Up ahead, 
deputies are about to lay down spikes. The driver spots them. He whips the wheel. And then, disaster. Watch closely. The speeding car nearly smashes into a deputy on the side of the road. Their escape route was minimal. In a radical wreck, the vehicle flips nine times. Harmon fears the worst. I expected to find two dead people. Amazingly, the drug-crazed rebels are still alive. The teenagers are taken into custody. There's enough evidence to send the driver to prison for 15 years. Speed kills. But fortunately, these Mississippi meth heads are off the road for good. Toledo, Ohio. Cops can't believe what they're seeing. A wanted man is trying to make a getaway in the family RV. And he's driving his massive motor home like a Maserati. I saw one male look like he's fallen thin with a red skirt. 35-year-old Timothy Kurth jumped bail on an assault charge and stole his uncle's rig. The RV picks up speed, veers across lanes, and outmaneuvers a squadron of cruisers. Cops decide there's only one way to bring it to a halt. Flatten the tires. The spikes are set up at an intersection. The RV swerves right and dodges the trap. I don't think they got him. But we can get somebody out of our drive. More spikes are set out. This time, they hit home. Looks like the front ones are gone. Shredded tires fly into the path of police cruisers. He's only got one tire in there. Back tires are out. Then a shower of sparks. And flames. It's on fire. We're going to need fire out here. It's now a massive rolling fuse. The RV could explode at any second. Without warning, the streaking comet dives off the road. The two-ton fireball roars down a boat ramp and plunges into a river. The RV renegade is pulled from the water and taken into custody. Fortunately, his desperate run from the law went down in flames. He's driving into the river! Coming up. When a skillful wheelman outdrives the police, it takes a foot chase to bring him down. But first, a drunk driver crashes at a roadblock. In the forest, in the forest. And ejects his passenger face first to the asphalt. Plus, a maniac in a Mustang is hammered off the road. But it takes a fleet of cruisers to nail him for good. When most shocking high-speed pursuits returns. Fort St. Joe, Florida. 
Deputy Tony Yowell tries to pull over an intoxicated car thief in a stolen pickup. Let's stop him, let's stop him. But this drunk is also a junkie for speed. I see the guy gun it. The guy guns it, turns around, and then we head back toward the beach. Deputy Yao wants to end this chase before it reaches crowded streets. But ramming the pickup isn't an option. The drunken thief has an innocent passenger in the cab. I wanted it to end, but then I didn't want to put anyone else in, in danger. Instead, they set a trap for him. Traffic has been pulled off the road and spikes are down. The driver spots them too late and makes a disastrous move. He jerks the vehicle real hard to the right to try to avoid the spike strips. All I could think of was, oh, Lord, he's hurt somebody. Send the board, send the board, Pop! <laughs> Yao races around the truck to secure the driver. He started going out the passenger door. He was trying to get out of the vehicle and run. Another officer rushes in to help control the belligerent suspect. He's finally taken into custody. That's when Deputy Yao spots the passenger, thrown lifeless on the blacktop. Face down, and he was just motionless. With his arms stretched out. Signal 7, a fatality. Yowl fetches a tarp. Got a yellow blanket and was on my way to cover him up. That's when this grave situation takes a miraculous turn. Deputy Yowl is stunned by what he sees. Be advised the one we thought was seven is not. We thought he was dead. When we got there, he was... He was moaning. Where you heard at? Your neck. Your neck. Sit still. We got somebody coming. We called the ambulance to him. He was in serious trouble. Incredibly, no one is killed in the other vehicles either. It's an amazing outcome that the driver, handcuffed in the cruiser, is just now beginning to appreciate. Anybody do this? Ain't nobody do this. No, sir. Are you driving? Yes, I'm hurt. What are you running for? I'm scared, man. I'm an alcoholic. I'm scared, bro. <laughs> a few days later, the driver goes before a judge. He walked in and said, I'm guilty. Go ahead and put me in prison. He didn't even fight it. He's just lucky that the charges for this alcoholic rampage didn't include manslaughter. He's doing about 70. Dell City, Oklahoma. This guy's got me doing circles all over the place. A man in a Mustang charges out of a neighborhood and cuts through a grassy field. Passing a semi, he nearly runs head on into a red pickup. The driver spots an on-ramp and takes this breakneck chase to the busy freeway. This is I-240, and he's going to get on the highway here. He accelerates to 110 miles an hour. Ramming him at high speed will be risky, but officers have to take that chance. Oh, just spun him out. The highway patrol just spun him out. As you can see, he's spinning there. He's propelled down the road like a pinball. But still won't stop. Another try. And it's over. 
That's uh, some good driving. The tenacious cops finally take him out with extreme force. A dozen squad cars surround the suspect. Go, go, go! The 25-year-old menace is taken to the police station, where he'll have a lot of explaining to do. Anaheim, California. Doing 100 miles an hour? Guy's really hauling now. A man behind the wheel of a stolen SUV leads officers on a high-octane chase. He's gonna run out of freeway. Look at him, he's just threading the needle in and out of traffic. Unbelievable. The driver is fast, unpredictable, and nearly impossible to catch. This is outrageous. He speeds through a crosswalk with no regard for helpless pedestrians. People trying to get out of the way. Cops are forced to take drastic action. Here we go, pit maneuver. Let's see if that brings us to an end. And it doesn't. Another cop races in for a second hit. They try to hit him again. They miss again. But up ahead, an unexpected roadblock. We got a train here blocking his way. The driver slams the brakes and makes a rubber shredding right turn. Then he tries to shake the cops by doubling back. And it looks like he's going to go across the median here again. Unfortunately, the smash up isn't enough to keep the man from making a fast break. And he's out and he's going to make a run for it. But his footwork isn't as slick as his driving. Looks like his pants are falling down there just a little bit. He darts into a parking lot, where Sergeant Chris Rusin cuts him off with a crushing takedown. My first instinct was to push him down, but just prior to me contacting him, he spun on me and took a fighting stance. So I just lunged underneath his arms and threw him to the ground. This Hellraiser's next ride will be in the back of a squad car. Coming up. We've been in and out of traffic, speed 100. Police stay hot on the heels of a pair of shoe thieves, then slam the door on their daring getaway. Okay, I got him. Plus, the nighttime eye in the sky hunts down a gang of outlaws. Do what you gotta do. While cops on the ground reel them in. Then, a carjacker's wrong way flight from justice ends in a pulverizing crash. Next, on most Chuck high speed pursuits. Memphis, Tennessee. A carjacker and his girlfriend are on the run in a stolen Honda. Chase is now westbound on Winchester here, Tower. Two police units close in. This guy's headed right to the airport. Then, without warning, the fleeing driver blasts across the median. It's a suicide run into oncoming traffic. Uh oh Innocent drivers are suddenly caught in the crosshairs of a speeding juggernaut. Man, I got a bad feeling about this one. With nowhere to run. Ah, uh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, no! Looks like they have just crashed out. The criminals plow into a packed sedan. Oh, no! Both cars traveling at more than 60 miles an hour. Flames erupt from the mangled wreckage. Greg Johnson is working at his salvage business on the nearby corner. I looked out my window um, to see what was going on. Two cars collided with each other. My heart was just pumping. I saw the fire, so I ran back inside and grabbed the fire extinguisher. And I was thinking to myself, you know, this car could blow up any second. Greg's heroism prevents the flames from spreading. Three people survive the megaforce of the violent collision. 
The carjacker is one of them. But his female accomplice doesn't make it. Fortunately, after all the close calls, no other lives are lost in this devastating pursuit. Ah, uh, this is bad. This is bad. Oh, no! Seminole, Florida. A police chopper's infrared camera allows officers to see everything under the cover of darkness. Northbound on Airport Boulevard. Tonight, it catches a purse snatcher and his accomplices trying to outrun the cops. Sergeant James Ingram is right on their tail. During a pursuit, um, I always feel that my life is in danger. I mean, that comes with the job. Ingram guns the gas and gains on the felons. He rams the bumper. And spins the pickup off the road. The truck narrowly misses a power pole and disappears behind a wall of dust. A closer look shows one of the crooks being thrown out of the truck. His buddies try to run. They jump over his crumpled body, but are quickly taken down by the cops. There were so many deputies involved that the guys had no avenue of escape. And no chance of ditching the evidence. During the pursuit, I actually observed a purse, a dark colored purse, being thrown out the passenger side window. The police send a message. In their part of town, justice is never blind. Up next. It blows right through the intersection. A car thief leads police on a deadly run through the Hollywood Hills, only to crash and burn. Then, a drunken lunatic loses control and launches into a bone-jarring rollover. When most shocking high-speed pursuits continues. Flying up western. Hollywood, California. It blows right through the intersection. Front light. Police are in a blazing pursuit with a man driving a stolen SUV. And he could be packing heat. LAPD believe they've got an armed and dangerous suspect. That's why they started the pursuit in the first place. Hard on the brake. Suspect sees a cross traffic. Oh, oh, he almost gets hit. Just when it looks like cops might nab him. Now he's boxed in. He's going to have to go around that car. He takes the chase off-road. Southbound on the curb. And there's a pedestrian right there. The suspect nearly runs over two civilians on the sidewalk. Then the road warrior makes a run for the hills and into L.A.'s most expensive neighborhood. The exclusive hillside estates of Mulholland Drive. The crazed driver amps up the danger by cutting his lights. He's blacked out now. Blacked out. No lights on that car. He flies down the mountain, hitting blind curves in the pitch black. Very dangerous because it's so dark up there. Windy, windy roads up in those hills. There's a hairpin turn straight ahead, but he never sees it. Oh, he loses control there. Into the guardrail. And the car, it overturned. He enters the turn too fast. Slams a hill. And flips. The engine ignites. The gas tank could blow at any second. But police risk their own lives to save the man they fear is armed. They're going to try to get him out of that car before it completely burns. Come on now, come on now, come on! The suspect is cuffed and later booked. His night of blazing through Hollywood streets 
has come to a full stop. A late night car chase on the back roads of Decatur, Alabama. 217 northbound, subject 024. A suspected drunk driver snakes across the yellow line. The intoxicated passenger tosses empty bottles from the window. Trooper Mark Wisner keeps pace, but on these dark country roads, a chase can go bad in a hurry. I'm very concerned that this driver is going to hurt some innocent person. To his surprise, the truck pulls into a driveway. It looks like he's going to give up. But the boozer has no intention of surrendering. The driver punches the gas and peels out. Weisner spots a sharp curve ahead. A death trap at these harrowing speeds. We're traveling at 90 miles an hour. I see that there's another vehicle ahead of him, and I notice that he's still not going to slow down for the curve. The trooper can only watch as the disaster unfolds. The drunk driver slams a pickup and flips. Eight neck-snapping rolls. The headlights reveal a horrifying sight. The passenger is violently thrown from the twisted wreckage. When I saw the vehicle go off the road, somebody had to be hurt, if not killed. Weisner discovers the man lying motionless in the grass. Sir, talk to me. He's still alive. His head only inches away from being crushed. If the truck had overturned one more time, the passenger would have been killed. Incredibly, the drunk driver survives the violent rollover without a scratch. He's arrested and sentenced to three years. It's a small price to pay for a night of liquored up lawlessness that nearly cost his life. I've seen some bad wrecks, but this is the worst wreck I've ever witnessed. Ooh, that was high. Coming up. Two women on the run are taken for a record-breaking ride. And most shocking high speed pursuits continues. Moving from the number one lane to the number three lane, we've been in and out of traffic, speed 100. San Diego, California. Stand by, stand by. Able to go on 80 south. Officer Brian Williams flies down a freeway in pursuit of two female robbery suspects. She's passing vehicles in the center divide. A woman driver, it looks like a woman passenger. It's Thelma and Louise situation, you know. Are we going to the Grand Canyon next? Actually, the women are wanted for stealing merchandise from a shoe store. She throws something out of the vehicle, throwing, uh, looks like paperwork or something out of the vehicle. Ah! Like, what is that? You know, it, it's, it's not drugs, it's not money. They had stolen shoes, and they're throwing shoes out the window. And they, you know, they're throwing shoes out the window. Come it's a bizarre chase, but for Officer Williams, it's also deadly serious. They were passing vehicles in the one by driving in the number two lane and driving on the shoulder and coming too close to people. And I thought, man, they're going to crash if they keep driving like that. Ooh, that was tight. 
if I don't want to get too close to them, because if they crash, then I'm going to get involved in the crash. For 30 seconds out. Suddenly, the suspects uh -huh. rocket off the freeway. Okay, take a Greenfield exit. I copy. Take a Greenfield exit. Officer Williams sees his chance and goes for it. The record-breaking pit maneuver brings the chase to a screeching halt. Well, that was nice. All right, we'll turn, turn off the Williams grinds the getaway car with punishing force. I know there's a wall across the street. Just happens to be about 300 feet across the street. So I push her all the way across Greenfield Drive. I can see the driver. I could see that she knew that. She didn't have control of this pursuit anymore. I had the control of the pursuit. Okay, she's out of the car, struggling with the officers. Second occupant coming out now. They knew it was over then. Their plans had failed. Thanks to the officers' daring action, the shoe bandits will be cooling their heels in jail. story get him out, get him out. of law enforcement officers who risk their lives in a daily mission to protect and serve.